Nick Nemeth will cross the line once again into a TNA ring tonight on Impact, but not in a suit and tie. No, 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 no. He will be wearing the boots, he will be wearing the trunks, and he will be making his in-ring wrestling debut for TNA Impact. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling, and we are here to preview the second TNA Impact of 2024. Last week, we had the, the premiere if you would say, of TNA Impact, the first Impact, first TNA in what, nearly 12 years, 13 years, some crazy number like that. I personally didn't think the show was any good. In fact, I thought the show fucking sucked. Other than Nick Nemeth's promo, I thought that was the only thing semi-interesting on the show. Well, tonight Nick Nemeth again is on the show, but he won't be cutting a promo. Instead, he will be making his in-ring debut when he takes on the Rascals, Zachary Wentz. And I believe this is the guy that was in WWE and he got fired because his uh, crazy ex-wife uh, may, may be a junkie too. Fuck it. Yeah, we'll call her a junkie. Why not? Sue me if you want. Um, his crazy junkie lying bitch of an ex-wife you know, uh, accused him of being <laughs> an abusive uh, husband and then he got fired for WWE. She also, like, re released um, pictures of him doing, I think, Nazi salutes and shit like that, which could be done as a joke, but she she portrayed these photos as real, trying to make him seem like he's some sort of... Uh, you know, like, extremist, and that's not the case. Anyway, I think this guy's doing better now. I believe he is married, or at least dating, Gigi Dolan from WWE NXT. So, I mean, it's nice to see this guy, I guess, getting another chance in wrestling after being punished by WWE for accusations that later were found out to be false. Anyway, that's who Nick Nemeth is taking on tonight in his TNA in-ring debut. I think Nick Nemeth will probably win. But do I really care? I mean, no, I think Nick Nemeth needs to be taking on a better opponent than this. I don't even... What's this got to do with Nick Nemeth? Last week, we seen him get interrupted by Macklin. Uh, Steve Macklin, whatever he's called. Why is Nick Nemeth not doing something with Steve Macklin tonight? Or maybe he will. You know, that, like I say, this is only a preview. Maybe there will be something with Nick Nemeth and Macklin after the match or before the match. But... Uh, this just seems like out the blue. It's like, why? The, what's Nick Nemeth doing? Why is he taking on Sakurai Wentz? But anyway, that's what's happening. We have a TNA Tag Team Champion Chris Bay taking on Kevin Knight. No idea who Chris Bay is. No idea who Kevin Knight is. Uh, just two bums, and unfortunately... There's way too many nobodies on this TNA roster. Uh, people want to say that TNA is thriving, TNA is going places. Uh, the, the fact is... Like a large, large majority, and I'm not talking like 60, 70 percent here, I'm talking like 95 percent, 90 percent of this TNA Impact roster is a joke. 95 percent of it is bums, people that are nobody. Sometimes I call AEW's roster bums, but at least a lot of people in AEW have like four years of mainstream television exposure you're looking at this tna impact roster and it is people that i've never heard of i'm sure the average wrestling fan has never heard of and i'm not saying people in aw are great but at least they've got like four years of being on tnt or tbs they've been heavily promoted you look at tna and this is literally fucking guys from the indies this is like indie wrestling this is like ring of honor wrestling this company is it needs a lot, man. It needs big signings, and there's just so many people on this roster that I had no idea. Like Chris Bay, Kevin Knight, I've no idea. Uh, next match: MK Ultra versus Danny Luna and Jody Fret. I mean, that that is four. That is a. I don't know any of these. MK Ultra, no idea who they are. Danny Luna and Jody Fret, never heard of these two names. Honestly, never heard of them. Uh, we have Dirty Dango and Olek Pudras versus Damian Drake and Dante King. I believe Dirty Dango is Fandango. The other three have never heard of them. Not saying this to try and be cool or to try and bury TNA or do anything like that. I'm not. I just genuinely have not heard of any of these names. And how can you be the third biggest promotion in America 
when literally nobody knows the majority of your roster. It just does not make any sense. And I'm not saying this as someone that doesn't watch any wrestling. I actually watch quite a lot of wrestling. I cover a lot of wrestling. I'm always keeping up to date with the news. And I genuinely don't know who these people are. So if I don't know who they are, then the average person is not going to have a fucking idea. Like I said, Oleg Pudras, Damian Drake, Dante King, never heard of them. Danny Luna, Jody Frepp, never heard of them. Chris Bay, Kevin Knight, never heard of them. Uh, who I have heard of, though, is TNA Knockouts champion Jordan Grace. She's defending against Trinity. Is Trinity going back to WWE? I mean, I believe tonight's taped, so it's not actually live. She could be appearing at the Royal Rumble. Her contract was up. Is she going to resign? Is she going to sign again with TNA? Resign? I don't think so. Is she going to go WWE? I think that's more likely returning the Rumble. But honestly, Trinity was a mid-card woman at best in WWE. She went to TNA and they treated her like she was a megastar. And you know what? I, I can't blame them because, like I said, this roster is so bad that if they can get anybody, any like mid-card guy from WWE... If they go to TNA, they should be treated like a main event or, you know, they should be treated like a, a superstar because in comparison to everybody else that TNA has got, they are. So, I mean, it is what it is. And uh, then the main event is going to be the TNA World Heavyweight Champion Moose teaming up with Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards taking on the Machine Guns and Okada who I don't think he's making his debut for TNA. I believe he's wrestled in TNA before. The problem is, Okada is like a bunch of Japanese guys. I mean, he might have wrestled in TNA, but I, I, I couldn't tell you because we have so many Japanese guys that have come over like the last like decade, last 15 years, and they've had like the one-off appearances in like TNA or Ring of Honor or, or some company like that. Or even WWE to the extent, and you just don't know who they are. I mean, they're all the same to me. Okada, has he wrestled in TNA before? I don't know. I mean, there was times where they would bring in an international match and they would bring over some random guy for Japan and he'd wrestle and that. I mean, this guy could have wrestled in TNA before, but I just could not tell you. So yeah, Okada is maybe making his debut tonight or maybe he's just returning to the company, honestly. I, I don't know, because the promotion sucks. A lot of times they'll bring in, like, random Japanese guys for one night only, and we're supposed to know who they are, even though we've never heard of them before. We don't watch New Japan Pro Wrestling. Makes no sense to me. Last week, TNA, uh, World Heavyweight Champion Moose just won the belt, and how did he celebrate? How did they crown the new champ? By having fucking dinner at a restaurant. That segment went nowhere. Uh, what's going to happen tonight when they go into the six-man match? Who knows? But that's the matches. Now I'm going to give you my predictions. I am going to go with... I'm going to go with the guns, machine guns and Okada to win. I think they'll win and then that might get Eddie Edwards a rematch. Or not Eddie Edwards, sorry. It might get uh, Alex Shelley a, a rematch. But honestly, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban shouldn't be anywhere near world titles. And it just shows you how far TNA has fallen that these guys are actually getting world championship reigns. I'm going to go with Jordan Grace to beat Trinity. I just don't think Trinity is going to be in the company any longer. I think she is going back to WWE, so therefore she isn't going to win the championship, and I doubt she would lose it at, at Bound for... Uh, yeah, she wouldn't lose it at Bound for Gold, or Hard to Kill even, just to uh, win it back two weeks later, would she? Uh, Nick Nemeth's going to win on his debut because... It would be fucking insane to cost them the match. Surely the guy has to win on his debut. I mean, I'm all for shocks and I'm all for upsets and I'm all for, you know, Steve Macklin costing him to uh, try and push that feud in a direction. But he can't lose his first match against Zachary Went Surely not. I'm going to go with Chris Bay to beat Kevin Knight. For the only reason is Chris Bay is apparently one half the tag team champs. Therefore, I think he might win. Uh, I'll go with MK Ultra. To beat Danny Luna and Jody Frett. No idea who any of them are, but MK Ultra, I'm assuming, is a tag team because they've got a name. It's a good it's two people in one team, I think. So I'm gonna go with them. Whereas they're taking on just two individual wrestlers. So I'll go with the tag team, MK Ultra. And in the other tag team match, I'm gonna go with Dirty Dango and Oleg Pudris. Because I think that is Fandango and I know who he is, and I don't know who the other three guys are. So there you go, guys. There's the TNA preview. 
no idea, no word, no mention of Ash by Elegance, which I think is a wee bit strange. But look, we'll see tonight what happens. Can TNA get some more established names through the door? Can they get some big names to cross the line? Uh, let's hope so, because I'm looking at the majority of this card and it's a bunch of nobodies and it doesn't exactly make for an interesting show and I can't say I'm excited to watch this tonight but here I will I'm committing to it TNA 2024 we'll see what it's got to offer I'll catch you guys in the next one till then though peace